One of the many problems we Linux gamers face every day is gaming hardware lack of support. We all know about those fancy keyboard and mice that light up and following certain patterns and color schemes just make our setup so much better. But unfortunately, most of them do not work at all on Linux. I mean, yes, they do work, but they work like bland devices. Uh, we lack all the driver support, meaning we, we cannot customize macros, we cannot customize lighting and many other stuff that comes with the driver on Windows and oftentimes also on Mac OS. Now, sadly, one of the biggest brands in terms of gaming hardware, I'm talking about Razer, does not support Linux at all. But today I want to show you how you can use your Razer hardware, meaning mice, keyboards, and even those fancy mouse mats with the LEDs all over the place on your Linux machine. So with no further ado guys, let's get into it. So the first thing you wanna do to add support for your Linux computer to the Razer hardware is go to this page up here. I will leave all the links you need in the description down there. So make sure to check that out. So you go to this website, Chroma Linux Drivers. It shows devices list and supported devices and then partially supported devices. And I'm a little bit out of luck here because my keyboard is the Black Widow Ultimate 2016 and it's missing custom lighting. So this means um, it does miss some little features, but for the most part, it works and it works well. When you go actually to this page, you, you're not quite as interested in choosing your device since the driver is unified. So it doesn't matter what device you have. If it is in the supported list, it's gonna work. So you just go to the download section down here and you choose your distribution and start making a package. Now, um, there are not pre-made, pre-built packages for this driver. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but it's pretty easy anyway to compile the driver yourself it's full of instructions here. It's really nothing crazy. So if you want Ubuntu or Debian, you can make a dev package. Fedora has no packages nor packages creation instructions here. OpenSUSE, the same thing. Unfortunately, uh, the only fully supported distributions are Debian based distributions, but this doesn't stop us from installing this driver. In fact, I have Arch Linux on my computers and I had no problems at all installing this driver. So you just go for other distributions and just follow this little tutorial. You just have to install a bunch of dependencies and just install your driver. So once you install the driver, you do not have any actual user interface to control your keyboard. So what you want to do here is go to the wiki, which should be down here. There we go. Wiki and go to using the keyboard driver or using the mouse driver in case you're using this driver for a mouse. So here are a bunch of instructions to for what to do, how to use the driver. You probably have to be a little bit skilled with Linux in general and command line usage since you're gonna be using a lot of terminal commands and you're gonna need to tweak it a little bit and play around with it to make your configuration actually work as you want to. But there is another, another solution. It involves using this little software here that I actually made. So um, I just downloaded the driver and I was really happy to see that uh, all the commands worked, but it's not as easy to just change your lighting configuration on the fly. So I just wanted to create a simple app to simplify this process and have just a nice graphical user interface to control the brightness, the light effect and whatnot in this keyboard. So you just go ahead and follow the instructions here. You just have to download this little package here. You just clone this repo here. The command is very really simple. So you just um, create a folder. So for, for instance, uh, you create a get folder. Now I already have a get folder, so I'm just gonna get into it. And then you just run git clone https um, colon slash slash github.com slash gabmus slash 
Razer Commander. That's it. You have downloaded the software. Now, of course, I already have it in my computer since I'm developing it on it. So let's get to actually using this software. So as you CD into the um, application folder, of course, you need to have the uh, Razer driver I've, I've shown you before installed on your system. Otherwise, this will not work. So you'll find a whole bunch of files and you probably don't need any of them right away. You just need this little one main.py. So what you need to do, to do here is just get into the folder or open a terminal into the folder if you have this shortcut in your file manager. And then you just run sudo python main.py. Um, you may want to run python3 since this application is actually written in python3. And some systems like, if I remember correctly, Ubuntu and Debian default to Python 2. So you may want to specify that Python 3 right there. And then you just run sudo python3 main.py. So when you run this, you enter your root password since this application actually requ requires root permission. And there you have it. It's a simple application. It's still under heavy development, but it works for what it has to do. It works fine. So let's check out this application and see what it actually does. And let's start from the known profile. So this is actually really, really simple. All you have to do is select the setting that you want to apply and boom, it's done. So right now you're probably seeing the keyboard down there and the um, software should be like right here in the corner. So what you want to do is um, you have to select a mode here. So for instance, if you want to use the breathe effect, you just select breathe and boom, it works. If you select breath, you have right here some more settings to fine tune your experience, like selecting the breath mode. So random, single color or double color. And in case you select single or double color, you have a nice um, color picker right here to select your color that you want to use. Now this keyboard is the Razer Black Widow 2016 Ultimate something something and it does have only one color. So it's just green. The backlighting is just green. It doesn't change any color. But since the driver is the same, you can theoretically give it some colors, but of course it's not gonna work. So uh, for now I'm gonna just select like um, pure green. So 00FF00 right here in the color picker and just select it and select apply. And this is gonna apply, uh, it's kind of the same effect um, except that it's not since a random actually um, cycles through different colors theoretically, but since this keyboard just supports one color, what happens is that you just see this breath effect, but it's not consistent. Now there are other effects here like reactive that's actually my favorite. So reactive is like you just type on the keyboard and the keys light up as you type on them. And Reactive 2, um, I'm working on it. You should be able to customize it a little bit since Re Reactive takes um, one argument, that's the time the keys remain lit up. So um, when I'm adding the um, little control panel right here on the right, you'll be able to choose um, the time you want the keys to remain lit up. Then we have Wave. Now Wave is another simple effect, but uh, I think if you, if you want to show out your setup and you want to um, make it a little more, more flashy, maybe you're recording a video or uh, you're showing it to someone, it's, it's really cool. Uh, it's not as, fun as functional, but it's there and it was supported by the driver, so I just added it. Um, with Wave, you have the possibility to choose um, left or right for the uh, wave direction. Uh, by default, it's right, so from left to right. If you just select left, you see it changes to left. If you select left again, nothing happens. Of course, if you, if you select right, it goes right again. So here's that, real simple. Then we have starlight. Starlight is another really cool effect. Again, I'm not sure if it's any useful, but it's really cool to show off. Uh, basically, you have all your keys that light up at different intervals. Again, it's actually pretty damn cool. Then we have static and static is well, what it is, it's static. It's just one plain color. Again, here you have the possibility to 
um, change the color you want you want to use. Of course, if I'm gonna select red, and I'm gonna try this right now, the keyboard should shut down. There we go. So now I'm gonna just select 00 FF00, of course. That's green, and if I just press apply, it's gonna light up again. Really simple, pretty straightforward. And finally, you have none. So if you don't want any lighting on your keyboard, you can just select none. So I'm just gonna uh, select um, static for this example, since I want to show you the other features this uh, application has. So right here on the top right corner, you have a game mod switch. So um, game mod is this uh, little icon here you can even enable it from the keyboard itself. So if I want to enable it, there we go, it's enabled. Basically what it does is that it disables the super key so that you don't accidentally press it while you're playing a game and get to the um, to the menu of your desktop environment, whatever. I, I don't really use it a lot since um, my hand is pretty, pretty far from the super key anyway when I'm playing. So it's fine, it's there, but I don't really use it that much. Maybe you will have a better use for it. Maybe you're one of the, these people that uh, accidentally press on the super key. If you're one, then you have this feature over here. So game mod can also be enabled and disabled by this little app over here. So if I uh, toggle this switch, there you go. You see this little green button here, it's lit up and as well as the logo of the game mod on the application itself. It's a little uh, nice touch I wanted to add and I, I really like it, I hope you do too. So uh, you disable it, of course it disabled again, enabled, disabled, it works really well. I didn't expect it to be so easy honestly, but it, but it is and I'm really happy with this. And finally you have a backlight brightness control. So again, really simple, you just select the brightness you want to use for your keyboard, maybe it's too bright uh, and you cannot see anything, I don't know, maybe uh, you're in a dark room and um, a too bright keyboard disturbs you, then you can fine tune the brightness. So that's it. This is just Razer Commander. This little application I wrote, I hope you like it. It's an easy way to control your Razer devices. For now, again, it supports only keyboards since all I have here is a Razer keyboard and nothing else. So you may wanna try it with your Razer keyboard if it's supported in the uh, Razer Chroma drivers for Linux. If it is, then try it out, try Razer Commander and tell me if it works. Uh, if it doesn't work, just open an issue on GitHub. I'm, I will make sure to fix it and to add any features that you want to be added. So guys, this is gonna wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.